welcome back to the channel. My name is Joy, and guys, we have an amazing show for you today. I don't know if you call it show, but at least it's a video. Now, I'm sure if you guys have been keeping up, and I know you have, with the election, you guys know, I'm just gonna have to giggle my way through this whole video, but that's okay. We're just gonna laugh at the insanity of all this. But you guys know that President Biden did a press conference yesterday, and it's been a crap show but there's something that people aren't talking about. So the first thing is we know that he mixed up Zelensky and he mixed up Putin, which we'll get into. And then he said that Trump is his VP. He did this within hours of each other. And I'm pretty sure I've exposed why. And are we actually getting Vice President Zelensky and Donald Trump? Guys, if you like content like this, make sure and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you know when I upload. Also, leave me a comment. Tell me what you think about what I'm about to show you and like this video, everything helps the channel. So let's dive in. First, let's do a refresher of exactly what happened when Biden mixed up Trump as his VP and just has no self-awareness. It's amazing. Take a look. A list of people to call on here. Reuters, Jeff Mason. Mr. President, your political future has hung over the NATO summit a little bit this week. Speaker Pelosi made a point of suggesting that your decision on whether to stay in the race was still open. George Clooney and a handful, a handful of lawmakers have called on you to step aside. Reuters is reporting tonight that UAW leadership is concerned about your ability to win. UAW just endorsed me, but go ahead. I thought that was Thank actually you. a good one. Um, yeah. My question for you is, how are you incorporating these developments into your decision to stay? And separately, what concerns do you have about Vice President Harris's ability to beat Donald Trump if she were at the top of the ticket? Look, I wouldn't have picked Vice President Trump to be Vice President, but I think she was not qualified to be President. <gasps> so let's start there. Ah, Trump's Number a woman. Okay, well, the a fact woman. is that <clears throat> the consideration is that I think I'm the most qualified person to run for president. I beat him once, and I will beat him again. Secondly, the idea — I served in the Senate a long time. The idea what? that so did a senator. senators and congressmen <clears throat> running for all. He served as a senator for a long time. Okay, it took me a second. I remember yesterday, I was like, huh? There's so much slurring. It's so hard what he has to say, but let's continue to hear about Vice President, um, the female Donald Trump. Office. Worry about the ticket is not unusual. And I might add, there are at least five presidents running or incumbent presidents who had lower numbers than I have now. Ooh, we're gonna get low. Later in the we're campaign. Gonna get real low. So it's a long way to go Ooh, in this campaign. Yeah, and so campaign, yeah. I, uh, I'm just gonna keep moving. Keep moving, keep and moving. because look, I got more work to do. We got more work to finish. There's so much, we made so much progress. Think about it. Really? Think about where we are economically. We're right 100% increase of the world. in groceries. Name me a world leader who wouldn't want to trade places with our economy. Many. We've created over 800,000 manufacturing jobs, 1.5 million jobs. I mean, so things are moving. So we just we got more to go. Working class people still have need help. Yeah. Corporate greed is still at large. Their prices, the corporate profits have doubled since the pandemic. We can't pay our They're bills. They're coming down. He doesn't talk and about so it. So I'm optimistic about where things are going. So that's the gaff that everybody is talking about. Now, guys, Trump actually spoke up about this gaffe and made fun of him. We'll get into that in a second. And I want you to see, because at the very end of the press conference, he was all done taking questions, and then he was being screamed at by... I mean, I've never seen reporters go this nuts. They were screaming, and he took one question that was off the mic about what happened. Because look at this. He has no awareness that he said President Trump. He has no awareness that he said that whatsoever, not trying to fix it, nothing. No clue. So I want you to see this, and then we're going to keep going. No one's saying that. No one says that. A lot of whispers. Okay. Thanks. This, we end it with creepy whispers. Thanks, everybody. I hate it like that. <laughs> this says, this could, look how angry he's getting. This concludes. Respectfully, earlier you spoke. 
Vice President Harris as Vice President Trump. Right now, Donald Trump is using that to mock your age and your memory. How do you combat that criticism from tonight? Listen to him. President this concludes tonight's press conference. Thank you, everybody. What? Thanks, everyone. They're screaming at him. Listen to him? His response is, you need to listen to... Okay. He says that his vice president is the female Donald Trump, right? As they're asking about Harris. Has no idea, no self-awareness. So at the very end, I'm so glad they did this. Somebody actually screamed, got his attention, and explained what happened. Said, how do you combat this? And he says, listen to him. So you want us to listen to Donald Trump? Your advice on when you mess up and Trump laughs at you is to say, listen to Donald Trump. What? Okay. It's, tell me in the comments because I don't understand. Like, what? See, a lot of times, and I think we all do this inherently, we try to interpret his word salad, right? We're trying to interpret, we're trying to understand what is he trying to say. I don't know if he thinks he's making like a funny little joke or a jab. What was that about? It just ends up looking worse and worse that he's like, listen to him. Oh, okay. So we shouldn't listen to you or give you any credit or any mind whatsoever. We'll just listen to Donald Trump, the one that you're running against that you say that you have to beat. Where's the joke? Where's the punchline? And guys, if I'm off here, tell me. Tell me if I'm missing something, but I don't get it. But I do want to go over this because this is super funny. I want you guys to see what Trump said about this. This is from The Hill. And it says, Biden mistakenly refers to Harris as Vice President Trump. And it continues. President Trump stumbled over his words during his response to the opening question of a high-stakes press conference on Thursday, mistakenly referred to Vice President Harris as Vice President Trump. Biden, who is facing calls from some Democrats to step aside as the party's nominee, fielded a question at the outset of his NATO summit press conference about the concerns about his viability atop the ticket. Separately, what concerns do you have about Vice President Harris's ability to beat Donald Trump if she were at the top of the ticket? Reuters reporter Jeff Mason said, and he says, look, I wouldn't have picked Vice President Trump to be president if I didn't think she was not qualified to be president, Biden said, confusing his running mate with his opponent. So let's start here. Number one, he continued, the fact that consideration is that I think I'm the most qualified person to run for president. I beat him once, I will beat him again. I mean, and that's the sad thing. He doesn't seem to understand. You didn't beat him because you are the best candidate. You beat him because there was a campaign to just vote for you to hate Trump. People had concerns about you back then, including with your age, but they just decided they were going to let Trump derangement syndrome, they were going to let the media gaslight and brainwash them into saying he's bad, so just pick anything, and now we're stuck with this. So it says, in a later question, Biden praised Harris for her handling of reproductive rights and her ability to handle almost any situation on the board. The mix-up came shortly after Biden mistakenly referred to Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky as President Putin, the leader of Russia, before correcting himself. We're getting that in a second. A reporter referenced the mistake during a question at the press conference, which Biden laughed off. Have you seen a more successful conference? What do you think Biden responded? None of us, okay, that's another thing. He kept saying it's a successful conference about his ability to lead. Nobody cares. First of all, it wasn't successful. The amount of slip ups and blunders, the fact that you called Zelensky Putin, this isn't a successful conference. You said to the guy you gave this, I think it's the secretary, some general something, like what the head guy, one of the head guys at NATO, you gave him a presidential medal of freedom. And then you insinuated that you banged his wife. Go see my videos on that if you haven't, because they are hilarious. Number one, it wasn't successful, but number two, nobody cares. Let's entertain that you're right. Let's entertain that we overlook all that. Nobody cares. Nobody cares about NATO. Nobody cares that you went. The American people care that they can't pay their bills. We're done caring about social justice. Now, we want to make sure we're respectful. And if we can make things better for our fellow Americans, no matter what the situation, no matter creed, color, race, gender, whatever, we all want to try to work towards that. We all want to feel a general sense of respect for, for ourselves and for others. I'm not suggesting otherwise, and I'm not suggesting we shouldn't work towards that. But when Americans can't feed themselves, ideals go out the window, and now we need to help one another. 
We need to put all that aside and let's just help one another. And he doesn't seem to understand that. And I think two things. Number one, cognitively he can't. Number two, he doesn't care. He's part of the elite, so he says now that he's against, which is hysterical. You are the elite. You have put us in this position and you don't care. And I just keep raging about it because I feel like I I feel like people aren't boiling it down to what it is. And I don't know if it's a pride situation. I don't know. It, I like, I'm a Gemini. I like to boil things down to like, what is the bare basics of this and look at it from every perspective. As Americans, we are in poverty. We are in poverty. And I wish more people not only understood it, I wish we had more people talking about it. Yes, we, we talk about inflation. Yes, we talk about paying our bills. This is poverty that we're in. We need to pull ourselves out of poverty and this man is not doing that. So he says, in a later question, Biden praised Harris for her handling of reproductive rights and her ability to handle almost any situation on the board. He did say that. The mix-up came shortly after Biden mistakenly referred to Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky as President Putin, the leader of Russia, before correcting himself. A reporter referenced the mistake during a question at the press conference, which Biden laughed off. Have you seen a more successful conference? What do you think? And this is what Trump has to say about it all. He says, Crooked Joe Biden begins his big boy press conference. Remember, they called it that big boy press conference with, I wouldn't have picked Vice President Trump to be vice president, though I think she was not qualified to be president. Great job, Joe, Trump wrote on Truth Social in his interpretation of what Biden said. The Biden campaign fired back on X in a tweet posted on the presumptive Democratic nominee for president account mid presser. By the way, yes, I know the difference. One's a prosecutor, the other's a felon, reads the post. I mean, my favorite thing about a lot of this is the blatant racism. And you might think, Joy, what are you talking about racism? Well, so the left has run on this campaign that says we need to end prisons, we need prison reform. I agree about prison reform a thousand percent. I like the way like the Netherlands does it in some of the Nordic countries. They actually rehabilitate and get you back into society as a functional person. And they don't treat you like a caged animal. We shouldn't treat animals like caged animals either. There's, don't let me get into all of that. They actually reform their citizens. We're here, it's for profit. I do like that the left has called this out. However, what the left has said is just let them go and let crime run rampant. Well, that doesn't fix anything either. But this is what's happened. And that's why we see just crime skyrocket, especially in the leftist places like Chicago, San Francisco, Seattle, the amount of homeless people. They've just said, go ahead and let crime be legal. But my whole point is under the Democrats, this is what the Democrats have said. And we shouldn't judge somebody based off their record. Suddenly, I'm not gonna vote for a felon. Make it make sense. So all of that that you guys said is complete crap. And now you've used that you're calling him a felon, that now Trump is a felon, which was a bunch of trumped up stuff. Trumped up stuff. Did you see that? But they're using that now and twisting it. So Trump's the felon and I'm not going to vote for a felon. It just, again, he, and here's the point, guys. I like calling out the hypocrisy because they don't actually care about us. For all the social justice stuff they claim to care about, they use this as manipulation tactics to manipulate our emotions to get us to make decisions that we wouldn't otherwise, like voting for Biden in office in the first place. So I guess it's back to criminals are bad and let's go ahead and be prejudiced towards them. And most of the criminals, as we know, big majority are minorities. They are targeted. So this is why I'm saying this just shows all the fact that the left talks about how everything is racist. No, it's that you guys are racist and this is your issue to deal with. You're putting on everybody else. Not that we don't have issues to work on in this country, but the right aren't the ones screaming, I'm not going to vote for a felon. I just wanted to point that out there. And then it says, yeah, by the way, about the felon thing, Trump highlighted other instances of Biden stumbling over his words and stuttering during the briefing in clips of the event posted on Truth Social. Crooked Joe Biden had a case of Trump derangement syndrome, he wrote in another post. And the press conference did not appear to significantly ease Democratic concerns about Biden's ability to beat Trump in November. Of course they didn't. But now, guys, I want to talk about Zelensky, because as we know, he mixed up Putin and Zelensky. But this one, he had self-awareness and he actually caught, which I thought interesting. He didn't have awareness about Trump, but he had awareness about Zelensky. And I have a theory why. I want you to watch this and then we'll discuss. Before, Russia will not prevail in this war. 
Ukraine will prevail in this war, and we'll stand with them every single step of the way. That's what the compact says, loudly and clearly. And now I want to hand it over to the president of Ukraine, who has as much courage as he has determination. Ladies and gentlemen, President Putin. President Putin. You can beat President Putin. President Zelensky. I'm so focused on beating Putin, we got to worry about it. Anyway, Mr. President. I'm better. You are a hell of a lot better. Thank you so much. Mr. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. President. So, you saw the self awareness. What's happened here? I think I have it. I want you to take a look. What I'm about to show you right now that you are looking at, I can't play the sound for, but does one of these people look familiar? Do you know what this is? Any look familiar at all? Let's keep watching. There he is. Do you see him? That's Zelensky. So Zelensky is in a music video, somewhat dressed in a drag format, dancing around in high heels. Oh, do you see? Playing Grab ASS over there. And uh, I don't, I can't play the music because I think I'll probably get copyright claimed. It's really weird. Um, and here's the thing, guys. I actually, I've been to several drag shows. I'm a huge supporter of the LGBT. Now, the T part in terms of slicing your body up and slicing up, when it comes to slicing up children, I have a lot of issues with, more medically than anything. Because as women, we know what happens to your body and your hormones when you mess with your hormones. Because what we already have to go through with birth control, imagine doing that to children. And what the lifelong medical ramifications are. Infections. Um, what that does to your endocrine system. I get very concerned on a medical level. If you're an adult, you have free reign to do what you want. We can argue about it. I'm not even speaking from a morality perspective. I'm saying, why would you put somebody through unnecessary surgeries? That is not safe, period. But he has these things where he's dressing in drag, dancing around. And I thought, how interesting. So also, I want to explain to you what it is that we are actually looking at. Oh, before we do, I, I like I like the part where we're humping on the ground, that out of this, and the grab ASS, and I'll show you why. You can see resurfaced clip of Vladimir Zelensky dancing in high heels goes viral. A video of Zelensky dancing in high heels while wearing a midriff bearing top has resurfaced online with people widely praising the Ukrainian president. The comedian turned politician has been cap catapulted into the international spotlight following Russians' invasion of Ukraine. I was about to say Russians' invasion of Putin. <laughs> the 44-year-old hasn't had a traditional path to politics, but the Zelensky, previously an actor who starred in a life-imitating art comedy series about a teacher who became the country's president. This is no joke, guys. Zelensky started as an actor. He was in this long-term series about a teacher who becomes president and all the crap that happens and then becomes president, which you might think looks weird, and it does, but we've had actors as politics. We had Ronald Reagan. We've had Arnold Schwarzenegger. This isn't necessarily uncommon, but it is weird, especially because he starred as the president. It makes it, it just, when things get too weird, I'm like, mm, are there coincidences? Are there? But, you know, we got to leave some room open, right? It says, in his previous career in showbiz, the married father also voiced the character of Paddington Bear in the Ukrainian version of the film, while he also participated in the country's version of Dancing with the Stars in 2006, which he won. But it's a video of him dancing in stilettos while wearing a leather-esque ensemble and crop bolera, which has caused quite a stir online. And it says Zelensky, accompanied by three other men in similar attire, thrusts, twirl, and even does a headstand in the raunchy getup. Also, we dragged our butt on the floor like a dog that's got an itch. That one I really liked. <laughs> Just makes me laugh. The others are thought to be fellow actors. Uh, I'm going to mess it up. Uh, Yevgeny Koshyovo, Stepan Kaz Kaz Kazin, Kazanin, and Alexander Pikalov. Forgive me, y'all. I'm just, I'm ignorant American here. The four-piece performance of Saucy Moves in the black and white video, not dissimilar to Beyonce's smash hit Single Ladies released in 2009. That's what I thought too. I was like, this is very Single Ladies. The music doesn't quite sound like it though. The spoof music video appears to have been released in 2014 with the title of a YouTube clip saying, translated to English, Cossacks 
Made in Ukraine, a parody of 2014. In the video, the four men start off the routine in what appears to be traditional Cossack clothing, which they then rip off to reveal the sassy outfits. The Cossacks from the Turk Kazakh, which means adventurer or free man. Is that like Kazakhstan? I don't know. Begin evolving in the 15th century in Ukrainian's southern steppe frontier. A clip of the video was shared to Reddit's next blanking forum on Sunday, where it was captioned, Zelensky, president of Ukraine, did a Beyonce-style dance in leather pants and heels. This man is a legend, and now he's fighting for his country. It was upvoted 5,000 times. Um, okay, so you might be like, Joy, what are you getting at here? Why am I tying these together? So we know, especially because of our wonderful person, Alex Jones, and for people who say a lot about him, guys, he's been right on so many things, and he actually infiltrated the elite events. There's a big event. I don't know if they still do it, but it was at Bohemian Grove for like two weeks. All the world leaders go. It's a camping outdoor thing, and they make the decisions for what's going to happen in the world and who's going to run things. He infiltrated one, and it was fantastic. And he basically showed a lot of the weird stuff they do, weird rituals, and the fact that a lot of them get together and they do all kind of weird physical intimate stuff together, please infer. They hire in people to do it. They do it with each other. Sometimes they bring in underage people, please infer. People who don't want to be there against their will, please infer. It's horrifying. Now, we all know that the world leaders allegedly love to do stuff like this. I'm not saying every single one but this is just an open secret. My question is, did he realize he messed up with Zelensky? Because when they're over there with NATO, just like in the video, they're all playing grab ASS with one another and doing all kinds of things since he has more of a connection to him. He was able to make those connections, but with Trump, there's more hatred. And have you noticed the two people he hated, Putin and Trump, he mixed up and saying who is an official title? Is that because there's some sort of weird intimate dominance thing going on that they do? And guys, look, I'm not saying that's the case. And obviously, I'm just hypothesizing here. I just found it interesting that these two things were completely mixed up when apparently he's supposed to love Zelensky and love Harris. I could be totally off, not even saying I'm right. But at this point, I wouldn't put anything past these people. I've also wondered if they are allowing Biden to go through this. Is this some type of partially form of a humiliation ritual that they are making Biden go through? So that's what I've got, guys. And that's what I found. I thought it was interesting enough I wanted to share with you. And I want to know, what do you guys think about my assessment? What do you think about? And again, I'm not saying this is fact. I'm not even saying I believe it. Part of me just, this is, I'm just being silly. And I'm laughing at this whole thing, obviously. But it did make me wonder and question. I do a lot of psychology questioning. This, These two gaffes, huge gaffes, happen hours within each other. And is there more going on here? Especially when he gave that Medal of Freedom to that Secretary General and then basically alluded to a banged your wife. Do you see how I'm tying all this together? Is there more going on than what we're being aware of? And am I just putting some puzzle pieces together? Or did I at least make you laugh? Tell me your thoughts, guys. Sound up in the comments. If you like content like this, make sure and subscribe. Click that notification bell and uh, like the video. Everything helps. All right, guys, we have so much more coming because Biden doesn't stop, so neither do I. And I gotta make some money and make us all laugh. All right, guys, until next video, I'm giving y'all hugs, kisses, stay safe, and I will see you soon. Bye.